Hello, I am Stephanie and today we are going to make this student room. I've already made two videos about it, the bed, the desk and the miniature chair. This video was sponsored by Graphic Stock. Graphic Stock is basically like Netflix in the sense that it's subscription based and then you can download as many pictures as you want from right now the largest unlimited download library with 350,000 pictures and it's always growing so they always add new pictures and new graphics. They also have vectors and illustrations. They reached out to me because this month, April 2017, they're launching a new collection that is going to be futuristic and dreamlike. So if you like that idea, please go to graphicstock.com slash future or check the link in the description box below and well, that's about it. For the student room I used a small IKEA IKEA drawer that I had in those little those tiny wooden commodes that you can get. And it was a drawer that I was not using. Actually I have a couple of more that uh, are just there. <laughs> so I used that and I simply took all the measurements so I knew exactly how big I needed the wall to be. And I also made a quick square sketch to know where I would put all the, the items in it, all the furniture, etc. Since the draw I used was too deep uh, for my liking, I, I am going to make a faux background, if that makes I, I'm not sure you say faux background, but basically I'm adding a piece of foam cardboard so it's not as deep as the drawer is and it doesn't look as odd. So here I'm simply, um, I've, uh, I've made the measurement and I'm cutting it out. Just always be careful when you're using cutters because you can cut yourself pretty quickly, which is not fun. And here I'm using graphic stock to find the floor. I wanted a wooden park floor. A wooden parquet, wooden floor basically. And so they have quite a lot of textures available. So I just found a few that I liked and, and downloaded them. And I also looked up bricks, uh, a brick wall for the same thing. On Photoshop I used the rectangle tool to um, to make the size of the drawer. So you simply select the draw, the rectangle tool and upstairs you are writing the exact dimensions and then you simply click on the paper and you have the right dimensions. I also did the same for a tiny brick. Uh, knowing that a brick in real life is about 22 centimeters long, at least in Europe. I don't know um, if all bricks are about the same, but I, I'm guessing it's about the same everywhere. And then I just did it to scale. So yeah. And then I added the other walls um, around. So it's the deepness of the new deepness of the room. And here I'm making the wooden floor. So I decided to go on that one, which is which looks a little bit aged. I did the same re rectangle thing here as well. And well, I'm not I'm not going to go too much into details with Photoshop because you might not have it and it's an older version. So I don't know how much you know about it, especially since if you don't have Photoshop as it's um well, now it's subscription based. I, I don't even know if you can still buy it, but it used to be quite expensive. Um, but there are a lot of free tutorials out there. You basically need um, you basically need an application that allows you to rescale pictures and to change colors a bit and then to well to print out that shouldn't be too much of a of an issue. And so I printed it out on a Bristol paper, which is a thick cardboard. And here I am just cutting it out so I can 
put it in my drawer, which is going to be my room. So yeah, that's pretty much it. It's actually a very easy process and it looks great if you have a... G you need a... You need a quality printer, I would say. I don't know. I, I think now most printers um, are rather good quality. Um, the question is always how it's going to last in time, if you're worried about that. So, um, as in the sunlight, uh, most prints tend to fade out. So, if you're unsure, I would suggest you not let it sit in the sunshine, in the bright sunshine, as the colors might fade pretty quickly. And that's just not fun. <laughs> So yeah, that's probably the only thing I would say that you need to be a little bit careful about. And here just removing all the white, uh, the white stuff. And here this is a good technique to fold properly. So you use a very thin blade, not blade, sorry, a very thin ruler. It's actually a metal ruler that I still have from my ar architecture studies. And that way you have an a neat fold. And here I'm just checking if it fits in. It seems to fit in. <laughs> Great! And now I am going to add the foam background that I did previously. So I'm just checking what uh, size of card what I have to put um, just behind it since it's going to be glued on those tiny... Uh, let's call them legs. <laughs> So again, cutting. Always be careful. It's easy to forget you have fingers and then cut your fingers when you when you use a ruler like that. It happened to me um, as a student. Of course, I, I was very tired that day, but still, <laughs> just be careful. It's better to double check than to cut yourself. Take it from me. I'm not going to go into gory details, but it, it was bloody and it hurt very, very much. And I thought I lost a bit of, of, of meat. Moving, moving forward, moving forward. <laughs> Bad memories. So as you can see here, I'm building the background of the faux background. So I can glue it in the drawer. So I'm I'm simply using scrap um, scrap bits from the foam cardboard. If you don't have foam cardboard, that's perfectly fine. You can um, you could use simple <coughs> simple cardboard um, from food boxes, for instance. A cereal boxes is always a good material, and it's very cheap in the sense that you already have it. But also cardboard from um, packaging boxes if you have bought something <clears throat> if you have ordered a book or I don't know something online and you have a cardboard box that you don't really use you could use that too so I just happen to always have foam cardboard scraps left from my studies and I also use them now to ship stuff sometimes so I have a lot of scraps and yeah, that's why I use it. I also always use a specific white wooden glue uh, to glue paper on and pretty much everything. Also foam cardboard simply because I know it's, it's working really well. I've been using that since my architecture studies studies and yeah, it's it's good. It's it's a great glue. It's a cheap glue. It dries fast now. Most wooden glue dry um, dry in maybe five minutes or so. So it works really well. It's I think I mentioned it's cheap. <laughs> and what else? And yeah, and it doesn't destroy foam, which is nice. It doesn't stink, so you are not going to be lightheaded. And yeah, so it's a great, it's a great glue, really. I mean, any brand. So uh, I don't think there's so much difference between the brands. So whatever you you can find where you live will work fine. And and just use that. I've I've never I don't really. So here's the the not finished room, but this is how it looks with the brick. I think it looks pretty nice. 
I really like it. Um, I mean, I love brick and this is a, a very easy way to have a brick room without actually making thousands of bricks. That is possible, but it takes a lot of time. And this is a, this is a nifty little trick. And here I'm just adding the wooden floor. Also same with the glue, so everything glued in. And it looks really good. I've been using that technique before um, to instead, especially if you are, um, maybe you're a photographer or maybe you're just a kid wanting a nice little room. So that's always a good technique. And then I went back on graphic stock to get some wall art uh, because right now the the walls are pretty boring <laughs> and I, uh, yeah, I used the same Photoshop file to check the sizes on the brick room, on the brick wall and then I printed everything out and now I'm cutting everything, um, all the tiny wall art. So I, I choose, I went with, uh, this is actually my picture, it's the daily mini veggie challenge from 2015 and I made a picture and I printed it out so you cannot find that on graphic stock it's it's mine you oh that's also a thing you can use your own picture if you want to that could be fun um, so here you can see the desk and the bed um, those are separate videos so check the description box below to to watch the tutorials for those they were too complex to put all in one video that's why I decided to make several videos because I think it's easier to watch them in chunks of 10 minutes than to sit half an hour or more through my ramblings <laughs> so you're welcome <laughs> and here I went oh that was a quick appearance of my cat so here I went with something more um, urban and kind of architecture like because I think I had in mind my architecture studies so I and I really like colors so I found a few pieces uh, a few photographs of buildings on the website and then an architecture and then simply colorful art and I thought yeah I, I really like that so I basically went with what I liked so if you are going to reproduce something like that and are using graphic stock I encourage you to choose the pictures you like best since it's always easier to match different pictures when you enjoy them so here I'm just rearranging everything before gluing. I'm using a toothpick in case you are wondering. Uh, it makes it easier to just move things around. And then I glue everything always with the wooden glue, the white wooden glue. And now I am making books. I used one picture I liked, I, I copy, copy pasted it and then I added a title and, um, and a colored rectangle between the two pictures, the two same pictures and then I simply printed it out and I checked scale before printing obviously always using the same Photoshop file and then once I printed it out, I glued it on top of tiny bits of, of thick white cardboard. And well, that's about it. I rearranged everything in the student bedroom. And yeah, so this is, this is the whole story of it. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out my other videos related the bedroom and the desk and chair and I will see you in my next video. Bye!